English is an exclusive pawnbroker's. Hello. Here, extravagant goods. This is absolutely phenomenal, isn't it? Are exchanged for big money. You're probably looking at about a quarter of a million. I'm overwhelmed. And eye-watering deals. It's a big boy, this one. A done daily. We're rich. <laughs> The boss is ex-property developer James Constantino. We did in almost anything of value, but what I love the most is the ones that make me the most profit. This time... What do you think of that? Oh, that's very pretty. Dazzling diamonds. It will look better with this. <laughs> Hardcore. <laughs> I quite like this. An abundance of designer bags. They should have increased in value. And James... Push forward. Oh, God. Push forward. All right. Push, 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 push takes to the sky. Get the nose down. What do you want, it down or up? What do I do? Welcome to the world of Posh Porn. High-end porn shop boss James now has 18 employees. Gorgeous ring, isn't it? Lovely. Working here is really fun. Every day is like something new. Oh my God, what is that? Everyone gets on, we all care about each other. That's one scary lady. It's a great place to work. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Hi, good Hi. morning. wonder if you can help me. There are specialists in every one of the four branches. They are just under half a carat each. That's a lot of diamond. When he's not at head office in Hatton Garden, James is keeping an eye on his stores in Richmond, Manchester and Weybridge. Nigel, should you be taking that apart? Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. I'm oh. just uh, reducing the uh, bracelet for him. Well, if it goes back together and looks like a necklace, then we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, James. No, you can rely on me. Let's hope he likes pocket watches. <laughs> Hi, Hi there. Hello. I've come to Pawnee Ring. Today, an email has come through from a regular customer. Patrick, I think this is your one of your clients, actually, Danielle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's she got? The sapphire and diamond necklace. Oh, this is the woman with a sexy parrot. I know someone who's selling a parrot. Who? The one that came in the other day wanted it appraised. But you've got to be yeah. careful. If you do deal with any parrots, just be careful. Yeah. Make sure they're real. I don't want to end up with a pigeon. You want a proper gold-plated parrot. I don't want to end up with a pigeon with eye lights. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Danielle lives in Surrey and the necklace is part of her collection. You are one funny little parrot. <laughs> this is Basil and he's about 14 years old now. And he'll probably live till he's 50. And with my lifestyle, he'll probably outlive me. <laughs> <laughs> Always be prepared. I think the old well is on. For the last 15 years, Danielle has been a landscape designer. Hi, Stuart. Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. This is one I prepared earlier. <laughs> when you've had a concept idea, and admittedly it's years before you get to this point, but to come and visit a garden that, that you've designed and had built and, and see it in its magnificence, it's, it's great. It's the satisfying part of the job. Part of my training to be a landscape designer, you have to study horticulture and botany. I got very frustrated that I couldn't find a decent exfoliant. I didn't like the idea of using an exfoliator that was gritty and grainy. People will even have chemical peels, which is quite extreme. And there just seemed to be nothing in the market that, that lay between those two things. I came up with the idea of, of using plant enzyme. And that's what I based my product on. Hi, Hi Alison. How are you doing? Come in. Beautiful day. Oh, it's glorious. You're right then. Yeah, it's really good. Can't sit down. There we go. So are you ready to test? Yes, please. It'll be fantastic. Okay, go on then. Put that on. 
It was when I was testing with Alison. She was so surprised when she looked in the mirror. She was saying, oh my, oh my God, oh my God. I said, no, Alison, no, it's not oh my God, it's oh my skin. <laughs> And I keep bugging her to get it out onto the market. And that was nearly three years ago now, so it shows you how long it's taken. Time's up, darling. Yep. Wash it off. Yeah. You've got to be quite determined to see a product through from conception to final manufacture. I think it would have been an awful lot easier to stay as a landscape designer, but, but there again, I wouldn't have my own product, would I? <laughs> To raise the money to launch the range, Danielle wants to sell a family heirloom. This is a very nice quality sapphire and diamond necklace. My father bought it for my mother and he would often choose really nice pieces for her. Most times he got it right, this time he didn't. <laughs> so she gave it to me and it's beautiful sapphires. To do what I want to do with the business, I'm looking at about £30,000. Let's just hope that my father had good taste in diamonds and sapphires. <laughs> I think to sell my rainy day fund makes all sense. It's not something that I use. And I think this is such a big project for me and it is the opportunity to uh, move into a, a different career. Um, and I, isn't that what rainy day funds are all about? While James has a reputation for buying and selling anything, at headquarters, an unusual item has landed in his inbox. Lawrence, have a look at this, look. We've just had an inquiry. A fellow wants to sell a flight simulator. That's amazing. 150,000 pounds he's looking for. Where would we go with that, though? I suppose you could hire out for events and all sorts of stuff. It's like, well, he has been doing that. The other, other side of it, 150 grand is a lot of money. So you might have two or three stimulators. Do you want to buy another one? Stimulators? Yeah. Yeah. So do you think you'd be up for stimulating? I've, I've definitely got a stimulator. Yeah? Well, it's a bit difficult, isn't it? It's really going to be a hard market for that. Definitely. All right, mate. It's interesting. Very it is interesting. an interesting thing to come in. Ready for me, Chris? Okay, here I come. You know when you said you wanted to be a beautician? I didn't think it was a good idea. I've changed my mind. Retired airline pilot Chris lives in Leamington Spa with his wife, Rosina. This is taking off any dead skin cells. Uh, 65, there might be a few. Bit of rub extra hard then. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Come and have a look at our English dining room, which doubles up as a bit of a, a museum, really. Well, I got something quite interesting over here. Not so much because it's original, it is actually a replica of a medieval knight's helmet. A little bit of padding. Mind your nose. I can see very clearly all around me quite enough uh, visual to fight a battle in. Or flying a plane with this? No, I, I think not. <laughs> Probably make it a bit nose heavy. I've been a commercial pilot for over 40 years. It's always been my ambition to be a pilot. When I was at school, uh, the careers interviews officers used to say, what do you want to be? And I'd say, an airline pilot. And they'd say, well, how about being a policeman? And I said, no, I want to be a pilot. And they said, well, how about joining the army? I said, no, I want to be an airline pilot. Being an airline pilot isn't something within the careers interview remit, but I was very determined to do it. Uh, and for me to become a captain at the age of 27 was something of an achievement. A lot of people see it as a very glamorous occupation, and I suppose it is in, in some ways. But the reality is, it is very hard work at times. I think many, like many professions, when you stop flying, suddenly there's a void. I retired just over five years ago, and I felt really guilty that all this knowledge I had was just going to be totally wasted. Morning, Roy. Right. Morning. So Chris came up with the perfect solution. Quite busy today, aren't we? I still want to be involved with aviation in some way. And a friend of mine gave me the idea of perhaps running a simulator. Three years later, we've got three simulators at Coventry Airport, uh, where members of the public can come and see what it's like to be an airline pilot. So 
Now this is the 747 in flight. This is flying down the Innsbruck Valley. Better leave them in peace. He's got the landing to come up. Very short runway at Innsbruck, so you've got to concentrate on that one. This is the one we're looking to sell. It's actually built from the genuine real nose code of an A320. The nose code was cut off and then we've mounted it on this motion frame uh, and it flies absolutely fantastically as an A320. And we have professional pilots on the A320 coming and flying it. They think it's absolutely great. We need to sell it because we need space in the hangar area where we are. We are limited to what we can have. Um, we have two excellent Boeings. One has to go uh, and we're going to replace it, we hope, with a Concorde replica simulator. So something a bit different that the public can come and enjoy. The price tag we're asking for this, I think, is very, very reasonable. It's only uh, a little more than it actually cost us to build it. We're asking £150,000 for it. If you just wanted to buy the nose cone as a scrap nose cone today, it would cost you in the order of £50,000 without any of the machinery inside. So one hundred and fifty dollars with an all-working sim, that's a pretty good value, I think. But will James be able to find a buyer for such a niche item? Pawn shop's head office in London's Hatton Garden. Uh, can I just ask you how much you could give me a loan for this for, please? Okay, let's have a look. The newest member of the team is settling in. Apparently, I've now got a chief operations officer. Um, I didn't know I needed one, but apparently I do. What the hell is that, James? What do you think of that, Deborah? Annoying. Annoying. that please. It's quite soothing. <laughs> I'm going to get a bucket of water in a minute and I'm going to accidentally Hello. drop it in it. <laughs> James is really new phone. Even my new phone's playing up now. I don't think I can cope with anymore. There's a common denominator here. It's called James. Oh god. <laughs> How can I help? I have an appointment to see Claudia, please. OK, one second, please. Thanks. Thank you. Come in and take a seat. Thank you. Today, designer handbag expert Claudia has arranged for clients Doris and Martin to bring in a collection of ten bags. I need a bigger office <laughs> with all these bags. <laughs> and so how long have you had this one for? This one I've had for about ten years, I guess. Have you not used it? Still got the tag on it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was bad. <laughs> I guess I bought it because it, it was just like a piece of artwork. Right, yeah, yeah, definitely. It was wow. a limited edition, this one, wasn't that it? That was a limited edition. And the wallet, I think, was about $325. It's quite funky, isn't it? Did you have a figure in mind? I'm looking for about 3200 Right, OK, well, if it's OK with you, if you if you can leave them with me, yeah. and okay, we'll get good. back to you and uh, let you know. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. Come Let's on. go. Come on, Otis. Let's Come go. on, Ozzy. Good boy. Hey, that's a good boy. Good boy. Let's go, walkies. Yeah. Originally from Philadelphia, Doris now lives in Norwich with husband Martin. My husband used to be involved in the music business, and I used to be involved in high fashion. Let's go. Hurry, get him. We met in London in Covent Garden uh, in 1985, and it was actually love at first sight. Yes, it certainly was. <laughs> I used to work with bands like Then Jericho and uh, Bomb the Bass and things like that, and um, it was a very enjoyable time. Basically, I stopped doing it because I missed Doris. <laughs> It's a big accumulation of years of uh, fashion. And most of it, I would say, I probably don't even wear. There's some poochy things in here. I would say my high fashion days are definitely behind me. I spend time mostly in exercise gear and track suits. Martin, look what I just found. This was the bag 
that I was wearing when I first met you. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's lovely. Do you remember it? Um, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember what I was wearing? Yeah, the, um, the black and grey cat suit. That was uh, something else in those days. <laughs> Could never pawn that. No, I'm keeping it because it's nice. Did you find a cat suit while you were up there? No, <laughs> that's long gone. Oh. <laughs> Well, these are my collection of the handbags that I would like to sell. And they've all been, you know, pretty good friends of mine. This is the very first designer bag that I ever bought. It's a Gucci bag. This could have been the second one, Prada. And my Chanel reporter bag. I don't believe this is real snakeskin, but it's real leather. It's probably embossed. This was um, about $2,200. And this was about $1,500. This I don't remember. I mean, there's 10 bags here, so. I don't really use them anymore. And because they are vintage bags, they should bring, they should have increased in value. I hope so. So, how would you like to go to Vietnam? Oh, I'd love it. Yeah, I'd like it too. Yeah. Doris and Martin are planning on using any money raised to fund the trip of a lifetime. Oh, I look good in that one. Yeah. <laughs> the places that we want to travel are, you know, Southeast Asia, maybe to Japan, places we haven't been before. Once in a Vietnam. lifetime trip, really. Yeah. You know, if you do it, you might as well do it well. Yeah. With the handbags and everything, you can only wear one at a time. So, um, yeah, I'm up for selling as many as possible. <laughs> You want to come up, Faye? No. Go on your bed, then. Landscape designer and skincare entrepreneur Danielle has given her jewellery to James for evaluation. Right, guys. See you later. I'm off to see Ian um, with Danielle's jewellery and uh, it's right up Ian Street and uh, I always get a frank and honest opinion from him which is very useful. Hello. How you doing? How are you? You're looking very glamorous. Sort oh, of well, you look having it. Yeah, well, you impressive. made a special effort for me, didn't you? Impress you. Well, you always impress me, mate. <laughs> well, have a look at that. What do you think of that? Oh, that's very pretty. Wow. I love the sapphires. That's a lot of work getting the stones to get them all matched like that. What, what sort of period is that, do you think? I don't think it's terribly, terribly old. You know, maybe 10 years old, 15 years old. But it's done in an Edwardian manner, which is lovely. Mm. Is that a bit of you? Well, it would look better with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did think that. I mean, well, when I first saw it, I thought of you in your chest, oh, as you can imagine, aren't you? Stunning. The only thing I would say is that I would take that, the two end pieces off and make them into earrings. Really? Because something like this, you need earrings with them. And you wouldn't be able to match it up that easily mm. unless you wore just diamond earrings with them. But I think you need the sapphire in the earrings. So it would become a sweet. Yeah. Sounds lovely. It's almost worth getting your ears pierced for. I might give that some uh, serious consideration. Really? You're not pierced then? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> it's still early. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's lovely. Absolutely right. amazing. Lovely. I'll see well, you later. Have a seat, Jenny. Back to your shop. Good luck. Cheers. Well, Ian really loved the sapphire and diamond necklace, but at the end of the day, it's my money that's being put out there. And I've got to satisfy myself 100% to make sure that we've got all bases covered. So we'll put all the facts together and see what we can come up with. Loans make up 70% of James's business. Hi, how can I help? Hello there. Come to reclaim my scooter. Okay, yes, we've been <laughs> waiting for you. There you go. Oh, I've missed it, I've missed it. It couldn't be more straightforward. Someone presents us with an item of value, we value it up and then lend a percentage of that value. Yeah, hey, look, where the rubber is. Most clients are able to pay off their loans and reclaim their goods. Brilliant, can't wait for the weekend. 
finally come down to pick my scooter up. It's been in there for 14 months, and thanks to my father and my brother paying off the loan, she's finally free to come home. But one in ten are unable to pay. We have to make them very aware, legally we have to as well, that if they don't pay it back, the loan plus the interest, they'll lose the items. Lawrence is dealing with a collection of silverware and a cane belonging to a client who has defaulted on his loan. When I spoke to him on the phone, he was really, really upset. And they're lovely pieces, they're top silver manufacturers. Unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond his control, it looks like um, he won't actually be able to come back for the items. And when it's like personal stuff like this, which he really likes, it's upsetting. Watching nature and looking at the birds, it just helps the mind. And you think there is hope and there, you know, things will get better. The owner of the silverware and cane is 53-year-old Mark, who lives in South London with his wife, Carol. All right, do you want a cup of tea? Uh, make it a quick one. Me and Mark have been married for 31 years. I don't look old enough, I know that. <laughs> We've got two daughters, Laura and Amy. We're a very close family. We've been through a lot. So I'm just going to get rid of this one. I can get it. I started work on the local council as a street sweeper. It was really good to meet the local community. I worked there for 15 years. But what happened was I had an accident at work. I lifted a bin, which caused an hernia and now uh, I had to have an operation. What ended was I lost my job. And then I just had a breakdown, total breakdown, because obviously I had a family. I thought, where do I go from here? When I was working, I liked antiques and collectibles. So I started collecting and uh, any spare money and buying things. Can you give us any information on that, you know? Yeah. Like turn of the century. Particularly love silver because I love the designs. After being unemployed for eight years, Mark was in desperate need of cash and had to take five of his favourite collectibles to the pawn shop. There was a card case I purchased, St Paul's Cathedral on the front of it. Beautiful piece, silver dish with a precious stone in the middle. Then there was the ivory walking cane. Um, the walking cane he absolutely loves. I was over the moon buying it. Obviously it was investments for the future for my children and maybe grandchildren. I got two and a half thousand pounds in the loan. I needed the money and they was kind enough to do that for me. But it just went wrong and I couldn't manage to pay. So I tried my best. I paid up to a thousand pounds, I think. But the rest I couldn't get together. As Mark is unable to pay back the loan and interest, he's likely to lose all five pieces. It was out of control, so I had to let them go. And um, it was really heartbreaking. Garden, Chief Operating Officer Deborah is keen to maintain standards. How to correctly write the word ladies when you're referring to something that belongs to a lady? Ladies, L-A-D-I-E-S. Grammar is very important. I mean, she comes across a little bit like a headmistress. Could be things, language is, is that more complicated. Really. It is complicated, but there's still no excuse for getting it wrong. I think the others are a little bit scared of her. I think it's just ignorant. Oh, I'm a little bit scared of her, probably. Just want things to be right. With five and six figure sums regularly at stake, James likes to test the assets he's been asked to sell. Apparently I'm going to be uh, landing an aircraft today, so uh, in a simulator. Today he's off to see retired airline pilot Chris at Coventry Airport. Let's give it a go. I mean, uh, how difficult can it be? Ah, well, there's going to be a challenge. Uh, most guys think they can fly. Sometimes, though, they come in here and they get lock up. So we'll, we'll see how cool he really is, shall we, when he's under pressure. <laughs> Chris. 
Oh, hi, James. How, How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, good. Well, this is the beast that you've come to see. This is a real <laughs> aircraft. You can see the real nose cone coming out of the front panels here. That is the actual aircraft. That's the airplane that used to fly. Lovely. OK. Do you want to have a look inside? Yeah, why not? Leave the way. OK. OK, come on in, James. There we go. There's the beastie. Wow. So this is what it's really like, is it? This, this is, a... is a real flight deck. This is a real Airbus flight deck. Control-wise, these are the thrust levers. This is the flap lever. This bends the wing to give you more lift. Oh, lovely. A set pattern that you put the switches in on a sequence, and then you check it with a checklist. In fact, if you look over there to your right there, yeah. to that white list there, there's the checklist. I thought it was a cocktail menu. No, no, no. <laughs> A slippery nipple and a mojito. And that's the operational manner that we use on the right. aircraft. Lovely. When I first got there, I thought, what an amazing thing. I couldn't wait to get in the simulator, but Chris started hitting me with all the science. Anyway, James, before you start flying, really you could do with a briefing, yeah. which will te teach you how to operate the aircraft, what the controls do, yeah. and then give you an idea of what you're going to see a little bit later Lovely. on. Lovely, I can't wait. If we look over to the right hand side, we see the ND, the navigational display, our computer generated map. We can see we are flying at 180 knots. Chris insisted that I looked at the tutorial video and it would be very helpful, but to be honest with you, after five minutes, my eyes glazed over and I got a little bit distracted. James, have you got control? Yes, mate, I'm fine. <laughs> I think you better wear this, James. Here you go. There you go. Oh dear, I feel... Yep, I'm getting into... Good. Lovely. Right, so here we are, we're at Salzburg. <laughs> on runway 33 at Salzburg. This is Salzburg, This is it? Salzburg. So we'll put a bit of thrust on. Oh yeah. Okay, a bit to the right. More. He's back on that control column now. A little yeah. quicker than that there, that's good. A bit more. Push forward. <laughs> oh, God. Push forward. All right. Push, 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 push. Don't you think we're a bit close to these mountains? No, oh, right. we're going to get a lot closer in a minute. Have you seen that, read that book, where they all crash and have to eat each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you eat me? Yeah, if I had to. <laughs> <laughs> what bit would you have first? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Something fleshy. <laughs> what, the rum? <laughs> <you think? laughs> That's where the good meat is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be a doddle, to be honest with you, and Chris was probably going to want to hire me as a backup pilot. I'll tell you what, I'm sweating. But as it turned out, it was a little bit difficult. OK. Come on, get the nose down on the horizon, otherwise we'll never get into land. I'm there. OK. Well, we're landing. We're going to go into Innsbruck. Really? OK. OK, what we're looking for is, do you remember in the briefing, the pappies? Sorry? The pappy lights, the white and the red either side of the runway. Oh, in the briefing? Well, yeah, in the briefing, the, yeah. When, the, in the, when I was watching the uh, That's video. That's right, OK. Do you remember the red and white lights, weren't there, in there? <laughs> Do you remember? You weren't paying attention to that bit of the briefing, were you? Three whites, one red means we're just very fractionally high. Oh, okay. what do I do? No, nothing, just fine, you're doing really well. Just keep the nose where it is, keep the nose down a bit. What do you want, it down or up? Just hold that there, hold that there. That's good. Tweak left. Yeah. There we are, two reds, two whites, we're fine. That's good. Oh. That's very oh. sensitive at this level. Bit to the left, bit to the left. Level the wings quickly. That's it, too much. Back to again, back to again, keep going, keep going. That's How's fine. that? I was feeling that I needed to keep composed and keep it all very tidy at every point. Front, left. Yes. I wasn't going to let Chris know that I was under pressure. Gentle, good, very good. Just hold that, hold that. Just twitch those wings level. Here we go, hold, hold, hold. Here we are, on the ground. Oh my God, that was so nerve-wracking. <laughs> I can't tell you. You did quite well. That's unbelievable. I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. 150, is it? 150,000, we're looking for it, yeah. So I'm going to need to do a lot of research. There are people out there that we deal with, a lot of wealthy clients um, from around the world that might want this as a little toy. You know, you never know. But I shall throw out and see what bites we get. And if there's anyone interested, we'll take it further. Okay. But thanks for your time okay. today. Well flown, James. Um, okay. Before I forget, thank you very oh, much. Oh, yes, we'll need that. Thanks Lovely. so much indeed. Take care. Cheers. Bye bye. bye. Well, that was. Uh, an amazing experience. I didn't quite realise how realistic it was going to be. At one point, I thought I was actually going to be quite ill. 
I think James could well come back with quite a few interested parties because the most important thing is enthusiasm and I certainly think he enjoyed himself today. The £150,000 that Chris is looking for, at this point I really don't know whether that's realistic or not. I've not seen anything else quite like it on the marketplace so um, you never know. Uh, there might be someone out there for it, I'm hopeful and we'll see what we can do for Chris. Quite horny. <laughs> Designer handbag expert Claudia is evaluating the 10 bags belonging to former fashionista Doris. This one is the Chanel Cambon reporter bag, uh, which is quite a popular bag in Chanel world. Um, but the only thing is, is the colour of this one isn't everyone's, you know, to everyone's taste. It's uh, olive green. Um, I think we've got authenticity card and the number matches with the um, sticker inside the bag, which in fact it does. This is quite a funky one actually. This little Dior number, hardcore. <laughs> I quite like this. <laughs> I remember when the punks used to wear black lipstick and I tried it once and I looked like, <laughs> I don't know what I looked like, it was awful. I have got mixed feelings about this one because I am doubting the stamp, the way um, the Gucci is written on it. And um, I mean, to me, it doesn't look right at all. I mean, the inside is crumbling away and that shouldn't really happen. Um, I just need a second opinion on this. I don't know if you've got time. Go on. Um, this has just come in, but there's a few things I'm concerned about on the stitching. I'll tell you what, do you want me to sit in your um, office and do your work? Well, I'm just, well, I you don't want you to make a mistake. There's please, a lot of Please, take a seat, make yourself comfortable. But thanks for your help. <laughs> I appreciate it. Good afternoon, Hatton Garden. Michael speaking. Lawrence is investigating a defaulted loan on a collection of silverware and a cane belonging to Mark. Defaulting loans are when a client's goods have to be sold. Unfortunately, that does happen from time to time. We keep the monies owed to us and any surplus is returned to the client. With Mark's beloved pieces, Lawrence is keen to try a different approach. I particularly like Mark because he's a genuine guy, a really, really nice guy. So what we could do is work out an individual value for all these items, work out what's owed, and then uh, hopefully give him one or two of his items back. But um, you've got to remember that James is a businessman. He might say it's too time consuming, so he might say no. Are you busy, James? Uh, no, come in. Do you remember these bits? The client called Mark, they're nice pieces, but it doesn't look much. Omar Ransden, uh, Bowl, which is really small but nice. Yeah. Uh, George uh, Jensen. This is the prize piece. It's a Nathaniel Mills card case. That's where the money is. So what's the situation then with this? What well, are you trying to do? What we're hoping we can do, if you're okay with it, if we can get all the loan value plus the interest plus any admin charges, if there's any money left, we can work out which items we give back to them. Mm. But what we don't want to do is give him something back and then realise that there's a deficit. I think what we ought to do as a safety mm. is to sell the stuff yeah. and then we can work out what, what piece to give back to him. Yeah, go from there. We'll go from there, lovely. Cheers, Cheers right. James. Thanks. You know, it's not cut and dry. It might be when we've worked it all out, plus admin costs, auction costs, that we can't give him anything. But on this occasion, you know, I'm really hoping he can get one or two of his items back. James has been researching the flight simulator belonging to ex-pilot Chris. He's hoping for an offer of £150,000. A really unusual item to come in in the first place, I mean, Chris has put his heart and soul into it. I mean, they built that basically from scratch. They built it from a nose cone of an airplane upwards. Uh, it's time to get back to Chris and give him uh, the news we've got for him and see how he takes it, to be honest. If we do sell the Airbus, it'd be very sad to see her go because we have put so much effort into building it. Uh, a lot of heart and soul had gone in from all our team there, but we need the space. So what we have to do, we have to do, that's it. Uh, 
Hello, this is Rigby. Is Chris there, please? It's, uh, it's Chris speaking. Is that James? Hi, Chris. How are you? Yes. It's I'm me. fine, James. How are you? I've done quite a lot of work on this, and yep. well, we've got a lot of people in the aviation industry that we work with because we're dealing uh, aircraft and we have uh, yep. sold one or two in our time. The problem that we face is uh, not only do you need to find someone who wants a simulator, you need to find someone who wants an Airbrush 320 simulator. So sure, sure. Uh, that is one of the difficulties um, we had, and I suppose it's probably one of the reasons you may have come to me in the beginning. But look, at this present moment, there isn't actually anyone that I've got lined up for it, Chris, I'm, I'm afraid to say. That's okay. Um, I think you appreciate that it's not a thing that you can really sell easily within a no, few no, days. No, no. no it's a very, as you said, it's a very specialised thing. It's a big lump of, uh, lump of machinery. That's right, yeah. But we'll, we'll keep working with it, and I do really do, I really believe that we have a good chance of finding someone for it. Great, okay. Thanks for your time, Chris. No problem. Do come again and have, a, have another fly. I will do. Lovely. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, James. Take care. Bye. Bye. Well, that's pretty well what I expected. That's, uh, that is not a great surprise, really. Um, it is a very specialised piece of equipment. It has to be somebody who really uh, has got the aviation bug. Chris was looking for £150,000, a hell of a lot of money. I mean, when you think you can buy a flat for hundred and fifty grand. They're just not queuing up around the, you know, up the street to buy those sorts of uh, items at the moment. I think quite a few of our instructors will be quite pleased at staying because they, they do like it as a machine. Uh, it's not doom and gloom that she hasn't sold today, that's for sure. At headquarters, boss James is defending his management style. Can you multitask? Can I multitask? Yeah. Of course I can multitask. Trust me, I'm going to prove in a minute that I can multitask. Can you do this? Tap your head and rub your tummy at the same time? I'm not can't. going to do that because that is a waste of time. <laughs> when I multitask, it's going to be constructive. I'm really excited to, um, to wait and see what it is. We'll see. Mm. Goodbye. <laughs> Can't chat. Busy. You like a little boy, James. What's he doing? I don't know, but there's a lot of noise coming out of the office, isn't there? We were connecting. What's he doing in there? Uh, health and safety, James? Four across. <laughs> How many bosses do you know can do this? <laughs> Only one. Is it dangerous? collector Mark took out a loan on a collection of silverware and a cane. He's been unable to pay it back and could lose all his items. This morning, he's been called to head office for a meeting. Come here today uh, to try and find out if Lawrence or James can help me redeem some of my items back. I'm just keep keeping optimistic, fingers crossed, and um, you never know. Hello, Mark, how are you? Hello, Lawrence. Come through and we'll go to James' Hi. office. I must admit, if anybody said to me, the client least likely not to come and redeem his items, it would have been you. I tried my hardest not to let them go, but yeah. I had to do it. It was upsetting at the same yeah. time, emotional, you know, um, yeah. you know, letting them go. Well, I'll tell you how it works. I mean, when I did the calculations, after looking at everything and started selling the items, it really doesn't look like you're going to get um, anything back, right. all right? Um, However, we have managed to save something for you, which I hope will be okay with you. I've got it here, and it's your cane. Oh, damn. There we are. You'll be taking that home today with you, mate. Oh, thank you. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm pretty, oh, I'm pretty pleased, mate. Fantastic. How do you actually feel at the moment? I just feel 
Shot, um, none at the minute, you know, I've yeah. ended up with one of the items which I love, yeah, yeah. especially, and I've got one of them back, so... Oh, brilliant. It means the world to me, thank you, Lawrence. Well, that would have an official place in your house now, won't it? I really appreciate it. Oh, you, you, are, are, you and James, thank you. Oh, you are so, Thanks so welcome. Believe me, you're welcome. Thank you. It's really nice to meet you. Ah, uh, you well. Look after really. yourself, Mark. Thank you. And enjoy. Thanks very much. Oh, here's James. You want a little chat with James? Well, yeah, right. thanks yeah, very you. much. Got yeah, it means so much. Thank Lovely. you. All Thank right. you for doing that for me. I appreciate it so much. Lovely. Thank you. All right. Thanks Cheers. for coming yeah. in. Thank you. Cheers. Bye -bye. I can't believe it. Just seeing it again after all this time and I've got it back. It's turned out really better than I thought. I've got something back and I appreciate that. That is the best possible outcome. He's now got a really highly prized item coming back to him, so that really is the cream on the cake. Definitely a good day at the office. Can't believe it. In Norwich, former fashionista Doris and husband Martin are waiting to find out if Claudia will make an offer on a collection of designer handbags. Yes, well, I hope it's, you know, the offer, you know, that, that I wanted, or even better. But, yeah, I'm quite excited to find out. Doris has got so many bags, she could do, do well to unload some. We've sort of done a bit of research on them, secondary value, uh, what we would be able to sell them for, what work needs doing on them. So I'm going to give Doris a call in a minute and uh, let her know what the result is. Hello. Hi, Doris. It's Claudia from Prestige. Hi, Claudia. How are you? I'm OK, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good, good. OK, so let's talk about the bags then. How much were you looking for um, to raise for all of the bags? I think it was between 3,000 and 3,500. Right, OK. I've had a look at all the bags. I've inspected them really closely and really carefully. Um, I mean, you know, they are lovely handbags. The only thing is, uh, with the condition of some of them... The little Gucci... Yeah, um, I know that. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, the inside the of that, inside from the age. Sort of crumbling, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And some pen marks inside others, and there's some sort of scuffs on the leather. Right. What about the Dior? Although that is gorgeous, that's a lovely bag. Um, but the only problem is, it is, you know, it's kind of dated. So, altogether, what I'm able to offer you for all the bags is 500 pounds. Oh, no, couldn't do that for that. Yeah, I didn't think you would. I'm quite disappointed to yeah. tell you the truth. Yeah, of course. I know, no, yeah. I didn't want to give you the bad news. All right then, thank you, Doris. All right, thanks, all right, Claudia. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye. 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 Bye, -bye. Well, no go. Why? Well, how much did she offer? No, 500 for the bags. 500 each for the bags? No, 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 500 for all the bags. Oh, God, Because no. they had to refurbish some of them. And well, so. I'd rather, rather just keep it in, yeah, in a sack in the cupboard. No, there's other people that'll want it. Even handbags that are designer brands, um, not all of them are going to be major money. It's down to condition, it's down to the current styles, it's down to desirability, so it's down to everything, really. Never mind. Mm. Hey, at least you've got your bags back. Landscape designer and skincare entrepreneur Danielle is hoping her sapphire and diamond necklace will raise money to go towards the £30,000 she wants to launch her new range. I'm terribly excited. I really am. It will just be interesting to see what James is able to offer me. She was looking for £30,000, which is a lot of money. And I'm now in a position where I can relay a figure to Danielle. And uh, I'm hoping that she'll be happy with what I've got to tell her. Oh, hi, how are you? Hi, James. Yeah, right. How, you how are you? Yeah, good. Grab a seat. Um, look, we've been doing some work on the necklace. To be honest with you, everyone who saw it said the same thing. The quality's there, the sapphires match really well. Uh, there's a high uh, diamond content and the diamonds are of really good quality. It's really well put together. It is really a beautiful piece. It is, it's very beautiful. It's just something that I don't wear. Look, as a, I have got some news for you and um, we've done the sums. Um, we've actually got a private buyer who would pay 65 grand for it. 
So it was quite a lot of money. You know, maybe I'll just chuck the job in and go on holiday. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean... I'm that stunned. <laughs> James, you've made me a very happy woman. I, I'm actually quite lost for words. I really am. I feel quite emotional. I think it's really well put together. So thanks for bringing it to me. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm absolutely ecstatic. <laughs> this, this is truly beyond my expectations, and I'm really thrilled and quite emotional about yeah. it. Thank you so much. Well, look, thanks for coming in, and uh, I'll get everything organised and get the paperwork over to you. Brilliant. That's wonderful. Lovely. I'll walk you down. I'm just feeling really blessed. It just gives me opportunity now to launch my product and have some money to spare. So how could I not be happy? <laughs> Well, that was a brilliant bit of news to be able to deliver to uh, Danielle. She was uh, jumping for joy and it just it makes my job a lot easier and it's uh, a pleasure to deal with clients like that. Next time on Posh Porn. I've got something here for you, Ian. Mmm, I love a big packet, darling. Wow, now you're talking. You can take him, James. <laughs> you can take it. <laughs> Yay! My yeah. God. <laughs> Are you, are you happy with that? Happy. <laughs> is it time for a comfort break? The employee of the month actually is 